Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Arno Atoll in the Marshall Islands. And this place is a very teeny tiny dot. Actually, if I had my big map of the Marshall Islands out, you would only see this place as a dot. So there's no point in that. We're just going to look at it on the tablet here. But I think we should start off by zooming out so you see exactly where we are in the world. Not many people know where the Marshall Islands are located. So here we can see the big Pacific Ocean. We are in Oceania tonight. And we can see Papua New Guinea, Australia, there's Japan. Here's Hawaii, and the Marshall Islands are part of the region of Micronesia, which I talk about pretty much any time I mention Oceania, it's just because people don't really know that there are three regions of Oceania. There's Melanesia, there's Polynesia, and Micronesia. Melanesia is a very distinct culture. Think Torres Strait Islanders, Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea. They have a, a very like specific culture that is very exclusively them. So that is that part. Polynesia is the one that most people think when they think of Pacific Islands. Uh, Hawaii is Polynesian. You know, like coconuts, beaches, tiki idols, things like that. That's Polynesia. Micronesia is the etc. It is the Hufflepuff of the ocean. It's its own thing. You know, it was um, quite a Polynesian culture once upon a time, but it has mixed so much with Western cultures, European and American, that it's its own very distinct thing. It's very Westernized. So here are the Marshall Islands. You can also see the country of Micronesia is nearby. We also have one of my favorite countries, Nauru. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Here's Arno Atoll. It is part of the Ratak Archipelago, you can see here. And definitely the most populous atoll is right next door. It's Majuro. And it's where the capital of the Marshall Islands is located. Now, you can kind of see by the shapes here that these aren't typical islands. These are atolls. And atolls are coralline islands that have sunk in to the ocean. And the coral around it has risen up, creating a big ring. But Arno is kind of different because there are three lagoons. You can see the big main one here. But we also have this lagoon and this lagoon. You know what's interesting? I was doing research yesterday. You know, I check back in on Google Earth two or three times before I film just to make sure I don't miss anything. And all of these clouds were not there when I was researching yesterday. So Google updated this atoll within the past 24 hours, and it was apparently very cloudy. Look at all of this cloud cover. You can barely see some parts of the land for all of the clouds here. Very interesting. It looked like this when I was researching yesterday, not like this. Very interesting. So, Arno Atoll is very distinct from its neighbor over here. That's about a 45 minute boat ride away from what I've read. Majuro, of course, being the capital, it's the most industrialized atoll of the Marshall Islands, whereas Arno is one of the least built up, you know. I think there's only one actual town town over here. There's only one hotel. There's no restaurants. Apparently there's just like 
a snack shack, like a 7-Eleven style place. All the tourism sites I read were like, bring your own food if you're gonna stay because there's only snacks. There's no actual food food. Unless like a kind islander serves you a meal, you know. But um, it's very remote, very laid back, very forested course with the beautiful water on both sides it's very narrow in some places you can see there and it's much more of a very laid-back quiet place apparently it's a good place to go deep-sea fishing there's lots of sharks in the water nearby not that you're hunting sharks you should not do that but I'm just saying there's lots of sharks, there's dolphins and whales in the area that you can see. So, a very interesting spot. There's my upstairs neighbor, as always, right on time. A very interesting spot to enjoy the vibes of Micronesia, you know. Just you and the sea and the palm trees. Which is one of the main economic sources of Arno Atoll because they harvest copra here. So copra is the dried out meat inside of a coconut, which you can use to extract the coconut oil. You can get the coconut milk, obviously, from inside of the coconut. It's mainly for coconut oil or other coconut byproducts that come from copra. But that's the main economic resource of Arno Atoll. The other interesting fact I read about Arno Atoll, and couldn't really find anything else about it. I read it on a bunch of websites, didn't go into too much detail, but that's kind of okay. Was that Arno Atoll was the home of a school for women that taught lovemaking. They taught sex ed to women here. And again, didn't go into detail, but that's okay. I don't need to read the details about that. But um, that came up in trivia the other day, and I was doing it. If you don't know, I do live trivia every other Wednesday. And that came up as a question, and people were kind of shocked, like, why was it only women? Like, that's not very fair. And it's like, listen, it's... <laughs> we are all there in school when you separate boys and girls, which apparently they don't really do anymore, which is great, I think, but... You know, you, you talk to the girls about girl things, you talk to the boys about boy things. That's what it was, from what I can tell. It was for women only, to kind of learn about what to do in that department. But I, that's about it for all of the interesting facts about this atoll in particular. Anything else I read just followed the history of the Marshall Islands and that it was, you know, doing its own thing until 1885. I can't read my notes, I'm in the dark. 1885 was when the Marshall Islands was taken over by Germany. And that's because Germany at that time was quite a new country. Germany was not around as we know it today until, what, the 1860s, right? So they were late in the colonizing game. Look at all the clouds. They were late to the colonizing game. Pretty much all the good spots had been colonized. They got some places in Africa, but it wasn't nearly as much as the British and the French had. So they looked to the Pacific and tried to colonize as many islands as they could, and they managed to snag the Marshall Islands. That wasn't to be for very long, though, because during World War I, Japan decided to help out the Allies, and they snatched up all the German islands in the Pacific to take away that economic benefit from Germany. And after the war, the League of Nations awarded a lot of the islands to Japan to have a mandate over to control, right? So during World War II, the United States came in, and took as many Japanese islands as they could, doing their part right? Kind of like the shoes now on the other foot. So after World War II, the United Nations awarded many of the islands over to the United States, including the Marshall Islands, which 
was a bit controversial for the Americans. Now, this doesn't concern Arno Atoll, but it's important to the history of the Marshall Islands, was that the United States used some of these islands for nuclear tests, which really devastated many communities in the Marshall Islands, but did not affect Arno Atoll. I don't think anyone uh, moved here due to relocations from the atomic tests, and they never detonated anything nearby here. Just, just a side note, that that's how the Americans viewed the Marshall Islands as a place to test their nuclear weapons. Which, of course, is not a thing anymore, thankfully. The Marshall Islands gained their independence in 1986. If I remember, again, I can't read my notes, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And that's how it's been ever since, doing their own. That is the very, very brief history of the Marshall Islands. I think I have a little slideshow to show you here. It's mostly just beautiful beaches and palm trees, but it's still beautiful to admire. So we will look at pictures taken on Arnold Atoll as I close out this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this style of content, please consider subscribing. Tomorrow is going to be another tablet-only video because it's another tiny place. And the weird theme of this week, it's really strange how this happened, that every place I'm talking about this week is just outside of that country's capital city. So next we are going to Djibouti. We're going to the area that's just outside Djibouti city, the capital. And if you've no idea where Djibouti is, if you've never heard of it, and want to learn more about a really interesting area, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, good 